Right, hello. Um, this is a pretty late update. Um, it's over a week late, in fact. I don't think there's going to be two updates this week. Um, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a busy time. Lots of stuff going on. Um, luckily, lots of stuff's been going on with the suit, so I'm going to try and keep this quite brief and very much suit-related. And by the suit, I mean the suits. Um, and one of the developments is I now have a third suit. Which is nice. Now, the reason I have a third suit is because this suit, which I don't know if I can't see what you can see, I don't know. Um, this suit got chocolate stains on it somehow. And by somehow, I mean that I was eating two boost bars for breakfast while I was driving, and, and, and they got onto my jacket. And yeah, apparently, um, chocolate is a greasy stain and therefore difficult to get out. So I had to take it to a dry cleaner that wasn't terrible. Um, and that means that one, it was expensive to get done, and two, it took a week. Uh, which, is, which is annoying because you know you kind of expect dry cleaners to take a day, but it turns out they're terrible dry cleaners. They're the kind of dry cleaners that make you shoot shoot make your suit shiny. Um, and you know, I'm not sure if I talked about this before. This whole thing about how if you are wearing a suit properly, you shouldn't be washing it. Well, so you shouldn't be dry cleaning it. Um, and yeah, you know, a lot, a lot of things. This is sort of the advice people will give you, you know, it's like, oh, wear it for a week, get it dry clean, wear a different one for a week, get it dry clean, that kind of thing. You end up with a really shiny suit. It removes all of the natural oils from the wool in the suit and, yeah, it makes everything terrible. Um, similarly, all those people that tell you that really fantastic advice about ironing your, your suit by um, put, hanging it up in the shower or hanging it up in the bathroom while you shower, also terrible advice. It will remove all of the shape from your uh, from your suit so you know good suits they're made to conform to the shape of your body they're specially pressed into the exact um into the exact shape they're meant to be um, and that's how you can get your nice sort of tailored fits and your tape fits and that kind of thing and they've got like you know your the canvassing and everything like that that means that over time it will develop to your fit however if you keep steaming the hell out of it it's going to remove all of that lovely work that the ste uh, that the that the pressing did in the first place um, and on top of that it's now shiny because you've been dry cleaning it as well so what are you going to do um, but anyway yeah so I've got chocolate on it Took it to get spot cleaned, not dry cleaned. So that was just to get the chocolate out of it, um, which they did a pretty decent job of. I think there's there's a pretty much imperceptible little sort of darker patch uh, now on there, but I, I can't even find it now. I, I found it in the first place, um, and the dry cleaner was very kind. Could, yeah, the, the dry cleaner very kindly offered to... Um, to get it done again, but obviously by that point I've been, you know, I, I've got my dark grey suit, the dark grey check suit, um, is, yeah, it's, it, was, it was starting to get a bit ripe, so I wanted to make sure that I was getting two days between each suit. Um, now, of course, while I was waiting a week, instead of just wearing that same suit over and over again, I did go out and buy another one. Um, this particular suit I'm wearing now is a Charles Tirrett suit uh, from the shirt maker, Charles Tirrett, or Charles Turwitt. Um, and the shirt is not from them. This is actually one of my M. Taylor shirts. Um, another thing about that. Um, and yeah, so the good thing with the Charles Tirrett suit, uh, it has working cuffs, which means that the cuffs work. You see, you can open it. And it's one of these things, when you've got a classy suit, um, you know, a decent suit, they will actually have working cuffs on them. I'm pretty sure it's more expensive to make non-functional cuffs than it is to make working cuffs. But there we go. Um, apparently that's how they get money out of people. Um, my dark grey suit, the, the Czech one, that is a uh, Moss Brothers suit that does not have working cuffs. Um, and my new suit is a light grey suit, you might see it in an update at some point, and that one is an Alexandra of England. Um, they like to put Savile Row on, on the badge. Um, I'm guessing there is an Alexander and Taylor Savile Row. There's a branch there. However, when you look at the royal seal on it, um, you know, by appointment to, I think it's the Duke of Edinburgh, I don't know, um, then it's Alexandra of Leeds. So, you know, nothing wrong with Leeds. Fantastic place. Um, but there we go. They clearly moved into Savile Row to try and get that Savile Row thing going on, uh, which is fine. Um, all nice suits. I do prefer the the, the the color on the on the Alexandra one. It does look good, but it has a lot of random 
like loose threads keep coming out of it. Um, I had one when I was trying it on, and they said, oh, no, you just pull that out. And it did just pull out. It was fine. Whereas these ones, I think they might just be properly loose threads, and, 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 and I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of those loose threads. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, the day after I took that, well, actually, no, the day I took in this suit for dry cleaning, I managed to get a massive, well, I say massive, I managed to get a grease stain on my dark grey suit. That was annoying. Um, last Wednesday, my cousin stayed around for the night and I took her to the airport in the morning um, and we had pizza, we had Domino's pizza, she had an entire large pizza to herself, I had half a large pizza and the next day had half a large pizza for breakfast while driving um, and yeah I obviously managed to get pizza on my waistcoat and on the back of my jacket. Um, luckily those, those are grease stains so they're just sort of odd black splodges and somehow I, I kind of prefer that. But what I think I'm going to try and do now, now, you know, now that I'll stay in the suit, because it is the waistcoat that's done it, I might try see if I can work out how to spot clean it myself. Um, I keep seeing instructions online for using wool treatment and so on and so forth to, to do these things. So maybe it's something that I can be doing myself, save myself 30 quid um, and the week's weight and, and maybe get it right. Um, make sure I'm recording. I am recording. Lovely. And... Yeah, so that, that, that is the tale of all of my stains now. Um, luckily, the, the dark grey suit, the stain is like on the corner of the lapel right here. And that means that, um, actually, it's not all that noticeable, especially on a dark grey suit because, you know, it's, it's changing colours anyway. So it kind of just looks like part of the pattern. Um, unless you know where it is, you won't notice it, hopefully. Maybe everyone's just, you know, being kind to me. Um, but yes. Yeah. So that's that's all the stains. Um, talking about wearing suits. Um, now, over this last weekend, I went to visit my parents, um, and uh, they they did laundry for me because I said, oh, you know, I can't I can't necessarily go visit overnight because I need to do my laundry. And they said, oh, we'll do the laundry. So laundry got done for me, which was lovely. Um, but then. What happened was when my shirts get uh, get get washed, sorry, um, you have to take the bones out of them. So the bones are the bits in in the collar that keep the collar stiff. Um, and so my Charles Tirrett shirts have these brass bones in them, and my um, oh sorry. my M Taylor shirt has these plastic bones in them. You see, um, which aren't quite as swanky and certainly not as stiff, but better than the ones that are in this I Taylor shirt or in my Marks and Spencer made to measure shirt. Shirt, but I'll I'll do a separate review on those all as their own video. Um, but the, the the problem was that then I accidentally left the bones. Um, I actually left the bones at my parents' house. So today, I had to do a massive old trip back to my parents' house to do it. And what I did was I took advantage of the fact that I'm going to be going around there anyway to also go to Harlow and pick myself up an audio interface, which means that at the moment, what I am recording on is not directly from my Yeti mic into my computer as I have been doing before because my Yeti mic has problems um, and it's, it's liable to at any point to just go robotic and horrible. I am now um, recording from the Yeti mic using the XLR output into a Roland UA22 Duo Extreme and hopefully that's going to produce quite nice sound quality. Um, it certainly looks nice on here. I may have put the gain up too high, but it seems to be functional, and hopefully that means that I don't have to dick about so much in post. We'll soon find out. Um, and I'm trying to think. I'm sure there was something else that I wanted to talk about, but I'm also aware that I didn't want to run on too long because my other videos have been extremely long, um, and that's 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 annoying. And oh, oh, was there something? important. I went to a, to a house party, a house warming party. Um, I boke, I baked, um, I baked shortbread, I baked sh uh, Spider-Man cookies, all obviously in my suit, this particular suit actually, um, at the time was when I was baking. I got a bit of flour on it, that's fine. Um, 
And yeah, that's nothing wrong with that. Now, oh, I think there's something about about me being naked. Because as we know, I'm either naked or I'm not naked. Um, oh yes, no, so when I was at home, there was once again that point where, well, when I was at my parents' house, there was once again this point where um, I've got to make a decision of, you know, what am I going to do? The shower's not empty. Um, I'm being called down to breakfast. And I had to go down in just my trousers and topless because otherwise I would have had to put on the shirt, I would have had to put on the waistcoat, I would have had to put on everything. And frankly, that's going to take too much time, especially since I needed to be, uh, I needed to be at Graham's to go watch a film. Uh, and, 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 you know, so that, that meant I couldn't be faffing around with putting it all on, taking it all off. So I did use the Bermuda rule, as I like to call it, of, you know, as long as um, there's nothing on there, it's not casual. So obviously that's not how it works in Bermuda, but you know that's what I'm, I call the rule anyway. Um, I don't pretend to understand the, the Bermuda rule. Um, yeah. So there we go. I think that's 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 about all the exciting news about me wearing a suit. Um, yeah. No. No. That is. That is. Uh, people seem to like the combination of a deep purple uh, shirt, a lavender shirt, if you will, solid lavender shirt. And my green PCB tie. Um, obviously, a lot of people don't, but some people really did like that one, going with my light grey suit. So I was expecting that to clash horrifically, but apparently people have no taste. So, or maybe I have no taste. Either way, somebody has no taste. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Tomorrow is St Patrick's Day, so I may wear the horrible green tie. Um, you know, in honour of of that festival, which obviously I I care about a lot. Um, in fairness, I care about it more than I do St. George's Day because St. George's Day is a silly, silly day. If only because St. George is a silly, silly saint. Um, especially for England. You know, there's so many other good saints that we uh, that, that you could use. Um, but yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that because, you know, I said about three minutes ago that I'd run out of things to say. Um, and I've still run out of things to say. And yeah. Thank you for watching, as ever. I have no. Oh, oh, that's the other thing. Um, I am probably going to. I said um, in my tribute to Terry Pratchett, if anyone saw that, that I was considering doing. Uh, I said it in the in the footnotes of it, in the doobie doo, that I was considering um, doing a live reading of uh, Raising Steam. I still want to do that. I'm not going to do it yet because I'm still reading The Last Hero. Turns out The Last Hero is actually a really good book to get on Terry Pratchett's death because that is the one with the quote that everyone's been using about your life flashing before your eyes. So I'm going to read that first because it does pre uh, it does come before um, the, uh, it does come before Raising Steam and so either some point this week or more likely next week possibly starting Monday, I'm going to start, hopefully, doing just live reading. So this will be effectively just me sat down reading it aloud, probably for about an hour at a time. Um, almost certainly very illegal, but I may have to do a bit guerrilla style and take them down immediately after they've been made and that kind of thing. Um, but it'd be, yeah, I'd be so interested. I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna read it anyway, so I may as well read it. And, and give other people the opportunity to, to sit there and listen to me read it because, you know, I'm sure that'll be nice. Hopefully it's going to have less old men than The Last Hero does because I've been trying to read The Last Hero out loud for myself and getting the voices for the massive group of old men is a nightmare. I've got to remember who all the old men are, try and give them all distinct voices and, you know, I'm not good at doing voices in the first place. You know, getting more than three old man voices out of me is always going to be tricky. You know, I can I can easily enough come up with okay, this is what Vetinari is going to sound like. This is what um, you know Slate's going to sound like that kind of thing. But yeah, once you've got like a, a gaggle of old men, I do. They're all they're all just going to sound cross to you. What are you going to do? Um, nipples akimbo because they're heroes. 
but yeah, um, so I think I might be doing that, and it's probably, you know, appropriate to be reading a book in, in a suit, so that'd be nice. Um, oh, oh, one other thing happened in the suit that was, that, that was helped well on by the suit was, um, at work, I work for a publisher, um, we were, there was an, an event for the launching of a new book, um, I think just called Moody Bitches, about, you know, um, sleeping properly, um, having lots of sex, and self-medicating less with drink and, so, and drugs and so on and so forth, um, and allowing your body to, 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 to experience its natural moods and its natural proclivities and so on and so forth. Um, or that's what I understand of the book. Now, obviously, I've not read the book because um, there is a competition where if we were to get a little badge that says either I am a moody bitch or I love moody bitches or I heart moody bitches and the hearts made out of pills um, and wear it and um, tweet a picture of that, then we might win a, uh, a copy of the book. So that's what I'm waiting for is to win a copy of the book. Um, and of course, we put the, the pin, I've left it in the car, but yeah, we put the, the pin in where my lapel pin should be. Luckily, it was a little one, so that actually worked out pretty well. Um, and yeah, so if you go onto my t Twitter um, at Shadebug, as you might imagine, then then you will see that that that, that picture of me um, stood in front of the walkie-talkie, as they call it. Um, I don't like calling it the walkie-talkie. I mean, I get that it's got antennae uh, antennae on it. Um, but it definitely looks more like an air conditioning unit to me. It looks nothing like any walkie-talkie I've ever seen. Um, so I would pr prefer people call it either the air conditioning unit or the death ray. You know, either of those is absolutely fine. Um, yeah. Okay, but yeah, now I now I am properly... I've overrun again. I, I, I have no idea how to make these short. Maybe if I stop rambling. Maybe I should write a script, but that just seems a bit false. So anyway, yes, as ever, I have no idea why you're still watching, um, but thank you, and I, I will see you at some point. Goodbye.